In this short video, we are going to talk about the difference between conjugate momentum and kinetic momentum, the fact that P is not always equal to MV. My goal is to at least make you aware of all the issues which I find are not often discussed. If you find it, I'm going too fast, hit the pause button, take your time. So let's start. If we do a bit of dimensional analysis, we see right away we have a problem. Delta Q delta P has dimensions of mass times distance square and inverse time. Now delta Q delta P is invariant, so it has to have the same dimensions no matter what Q is. Since we can pick Q to represent different quantities, P needs to change accordingly. For example, if Q is a distance, then P is mass distance over time, mass times velocity. If Q is an angle, then P is mass distance square over time, angular momentum. If Q is area, for example the area swept by a planet during its motion, then P is mass over time. So it should be clear that P cannot always be mass times velocity, but things get even more tricky, so let's look at that in more detail. This is a Hamiltonian for a charged particle. M is the mass, P is the momentum, the Q in the Gothic font is the charge, A is the magnetic potential, which is a function of Q, the position, and finally phi is the electric potential. This is in the vector notation, but we're going to be rewriting it in terms of the index notation. This Gij is the metric tensor, it's a 3x3 three three matrix that represents the scalar product. In Cartesian coordinate, G is the identity matrix, but in other coordinate systems it can be more complicated. We can use one of the Hamilton's equation to calculate the velocity, the derivative of Q in time, from the Hamiltonian. I'm not going through the derivation in detail, you can pause if you want to stare the math longer. The first step is taking the derivative with respect to P, noting that only two of these terms have a P, and that the indexes are dummy indices, it doesn't matter what they're called. So you get two similar elements that then you sum. The second step is inverting the matrix G, so we have an expression for P. P is MGV plus QA. The first part we call kinetic momentum, we know that there will be a dependency on the coordinate system through G. The second part we call it potential momentum. This is similar to energy being kinetic energy plus potential energy. We know the dependence on the magnetic force through the potential. So let's look at this uh, second part. You may recall that the magnetic potential depends on the gauge we choose to represent them. This is where you add the gradient of a function to A, we change gauge, and the physics does not change. On the other hand, the trajectories, and therefore the velocity, should not change if we change gauge. If A is gauge dependent, and we want MGV to be gauge invariant, then P must be gauge dependent. Now if you study quantum field theory behind all the hard notation that talks about minimal coupling, there is this simple equation here. The crucial thing is that gauge dependent quantities are not physical in the sense that they do not correspond to things you can directly measure. You can't measure the magnetic potential, you measure the magnetic field. In the same way, you don't measure the conjugate momentum, you measure the kinetic momentum. This is, to me, the most important difference between P and MV. So I'll repeat it again. You don't measure conjugate momentum, you measure kinetic momentum. Now, if we fix a gauge, then we have a relationship between these quantities. In particular, P equals MGV only, if there are no magnetic forces and we chose the gauge where A is zero. Just so you know, you have similar issues in relativity between for momentum, for velocity, and for potential. This mathematical structure is present in classical mechanics, relativity, quantum mechanics, all of physics. Now that we got rid of the dependency on the magnetic field, we still have the dependency on G. In principle, we'd like to say that P equal MV, MQ dot. This is the case only if G is the identity matrix. The velocity needs to form an orthonormal basis, which only happens in Cartesian coordinates in an inertial frame. For example, we may have an orthogonal system, like a spherical coordinate, where G is diagonal but not the identity. The conjugate momentums along R will be mR dot, which is mass times velocity. But in the angular directions, we are going to get an R squared. Along those directions, conjugate momentum is really angular momentum, so it is not simply mq dot. This should give you a sense that conjugate momentum p is not the same as kinetic momentum mv. The most important difference to me is that mv is gauge independent, it is a measurable quantity. p instead is gauge dependent and is not a measurable quantity. This is already true in classical mechanics, no need to drag in more complicated theories. 
P is equal to MV only if there are no magnetic forces, you are in an inertial frame using a Cartesian coordinate system. In all other cases, your mileage may vary.